So today we're going to change this broken cigarette lighter adapter with this new one. This looks like it's a pretty good. This looks like it's a pretty good uh, cigarette lighter plug. You can see this one's a, a cheap one. So this is a spring for the two sides, which is probably okay. You just tied a knot in the wire, soldered it on up here. There's no fuse on the inside. This is spring loaded. It's not a very strong spring. We will cut this off. We don't need these parts. And I'll strip this wire in a second. I want to show you how this comes apart. There's a nut right here and the screws on this side. So I've already taken one apart because it's coming in two pack. I'll show you what I got. So first thing you gotta do is take this knurled nut off, which is right here. This piece sets inside there. That's this little plunger. That's a heavy spring. It's really hard to push. But just behind here is a fuse. So when you take this off, these three pieces will come out. The spring will also come out. You might have to tip it upside down to get the spring out. That's a pretty big spring. And then this is a little ring around here and that's helping hold the two halves together. So you gotta pull that off. Once you get that off, then you can take your Phillips screwdriver. This side already has a hex on it, so you don't need a wrench on there. So the Phillips screwdriver unscrews the screw, then that'll come out, pull the screw out, and then you have two halves. This one has an LED on the inside of it, so there's a resistor also in there. So the LED goes to the ground terminals, and then through the resistor to the center terminal. This is where the, the spring sits inside of here. But when we solder, we're going to solder the one wire to this side, and the other wire will get soldered to this side. So you can see they have the brown wire going to the center, so we'll do the same thing. So the brown wire will go to the where the resistor is, and the blue wire will go to the ground. So we gotta remember to put this on first. We don't wanna forget that. And that's not in two halves, so that has to go on first. So I'll put that on right now. And then when we go to solder here, we wanna at least strip this much wire. We could possibly strip extra and then just tuck it up inside there. There is no clamp that's gonna hold the wire. So we could do the same thing they did, tie a knot in it to leave a little bit extra tie a knot right back in the very back. So that's what I'm going to shoot for. So we'll do a little bit extra and we'll tie a knot in there. So I'm going to use this part to cut like a razor blade. You can use a razor blade too. Just don't squeeze very tight. It's a lot easier on the cheaper thinner wires to do that if you get the good heavy duty black it's a lot better to just use the razor blade and slowly go through the jacket so you don't cut the wire on the inside we'll see if i can tie a knot in here that's really any bigger it might work we'll strip just a little bit of this and i use the 18 gauge pole
I'm going to twist these wires up. I'm going to turn on my Ryobi solder iron. It's cordless. It only take a minute to warm up. I wanted to mention this fuse that comes with this. They don't know what you're going to wire it to. So this is a 20 amp fuse. So 20 amp would require like 12 gauge wire. Most of your cigarette lighters in your cars have fuses in your automobile that blow at 10 amps. So you would at least want to downsize this probably to 10 amps or you might be changing your fuse inside your car more often. But 10 amps would still be 16 gauge wire, 14 gauge being 15 amps. So 16 gauge wire would be 10. So this will probably end up being uh, 18 gauge would be good for five or seven and a half amps. I can't remember the, the standard, I can look that up. But I'm gonna, I got a whole packet of fuses. So I'm actually gonna size this to what I'm actually drawing on the motor. So it might actually even be less. So I just have a bunch of different fuses I can put in the smallest one. Generally you size the fuse to the wire, but in this case I can actually even go smaller. So I'm gonna size it to the motor. But I still won't melt the wire, you know, as long as I'm smaller than what it's rated for. Okay, soldering iron's warmed up already. I got some electrical solder. I'm gonna back this up for a second. We will pre-tin these wires so it's a little bit easier. The solder to the solder, solder to the cigarette lighter. So we said brown was going to be the tip, which is the center. And then we'll do the blue on the brown side of it. So don't look like a cold solder. The solder looks like it's flowing. I don't see a sharp crisp edge. It looks like it's just one piece. It's hard to see with the focus. We put that back in its groove. So that not, it's not right up against the, the end. Maybe it'll be if I stuff it in there, that'll help some. This back on. Tuck that brown wire back in a little bit better. Get it snapped together. Put this in the hex side. Hold that with my finger. Screw the screw back in. That's tight. 
the ring back on. Put the spring in there. Put this in there for now. Put those two pieces on there. Got tight. It's still spring loaded. I have my portable power bank. It's blue ready. EB3A. Turn it on. Stick this in. You can see the light works. Here's the on off switch. And it's actually the shower. So this is the part that would go in the water. So we'll turn it on. So it's running. And the display says we're using six watts, seven watts. So even if I said it was, was using one amp, throwing that motor at 12 volts, that would be 12 watts. So we're only using half of that. So it's probably only about a half an amp. So if I can find one of these, let us say one amp. This one says one amp. I don't know if you can see it right there. We will put that. Inside, put the ring back on. The light is still on. And we're running. One amp fuse instead of the 20 amp fuse. So something was to happen. I was a nick the wire. Uh, I blow the fuse. Hopefully it wouldn't burn up my solar generator, my blue eddy. Uh, hopefully we don't burn up the motor. Even if something was to happen inside the motor, and a piece of dirt got stuck in here in the propeller and it stalled it out. Hopefully we would blow the fuse first. So not only did I make the fuse small enough to protect the wire, which I think would be about five amps. I went even smaller, so hopefully I can make the motor even last longer. So that was a simple fix.